welcome or welcome back to a game of friends and dawns my name's hannah and this is the start of another weekly reading vlog Yay, got me. <coughs> so it is monday obviously uh, last night i started jade fire gold by june cl tan and i am um, just under halfway, I wouldn't say, but maybe a little bit less than that. This far in, uh, page 138. Unfortunately, I did stop in the middle of a chapter, but there's only about 449 pages in this book. The author letter, which I always keep in the book, with the exception of the dragon just there. Because this is a dragon. I'm going to have a dragon on the outwall, but anyway. That's that, even though I'm not planning on going anywhere yet. And I do like putting it in this little book sleeve to protect the hardcover. Uh, I have the very lift edition. Uh, in An Empire on the Brink of War, Anne is no one with no past and no family. Altan is a lost heir. His future is stolen away as a child. When they meet, Altan sees in Anne a path to reclaiming the throne, and sees a way to finally unlock her past and understand her legal magical abilities. But they may have to pay a fair deadlier, far deadlier price than either could have imagined. Girls of Paper and Fire meets a son of Rates and Moons in June C. Altan's stunning debut, with ferocious action, shadowy intrigue, witch magic, and a captivating slow burn romance collide. And can we just talk about Fairy Loot's under dust jacket out, because this is stunning. And we have the, my dust jacket looks a bit beat up, but this is the exclusive cover for that one. So I'm enjoying it so far. It is a little bit slow paced, <coughs> but it's not slow is in draggy slow, it's slow is in gentle river slow. You know it's gonna get where it's going, it's gonna build up and it's gonna be a nice nice right well it does. Um so, yeah. I am liking Anne as a character, she's feisty, she's an orphan and she knows that she has things to hide because in this world the magicians and those who use magic are hunted uh, but Anne is hunted by her own kind the magic users as well as the non-magic users which was a nice it just turning out to be a nice little surprise um, at some point this week I do need to finish that script for uni but I can do that tomorrow I think and it doesn't have to be in until the 3rd of January, but I want it in sooner rather than later. I um, might see if I can find some productivity sprints and do a bit then. But yeah, this this Saturday is my insurance anniversary, so we'll be going to York. I will try to get some footage of that, but we all know I'm not very good at that on outdoors yet. So that's it for this update. This book makes book 11 for the month of, Jan month of December and we are only on the 13th. This <laughs> is crazy, I mean, no, we not, haven't done that in a while, admittedly, the majority of the way to be middle grade, but we're going with it. We're not discounting middle grade on this channel, we like middle grade. Uh, yeah, that's it for this update, I think. Now it's Tuesday. I finished J Fire Gold by June St. Altan. I gave a brief synopsis of what this was about yesterday. And I do love this cover. And I gave it five stars. I did thoroughly enjoy it. I thought the world building was very well done. It was very well executed. Pacing once it got over the initial slowness was 
perfect it didn't feel rushed or anything towards the end it did feel a teeny bit slow at the start but i think that was perfect for that particular storyline it needed the slow start so you could understand why certain characters did what they did and and why so yeah five stars for that one i have haven't quite finished that script for uni but it didn't need to be in until the 3rd of january so i sort of said i'll be happy i'll be very happy if i can get it done by thursday and upload it to the university portal because i do um open university so i study part time speaking of part time i do work up time i unfortunately didn't get the job i interviewed with at work but that's fine because i still have my job this was just a an inter this would have been an internal move but i have a job that's a good job and i am good at that job it's just not what i need to do full, uh, long term but there'll be another opportunity at some point that's so oh. What do I fancy reading next? I discovered the problem with mood reading. I have too many books. Uh, but what do I fancy? I do have Heartstopper, Volume 1 by Alice Oman, Oseman, the story of Charlie and Nick. Um, as they come to terms with gender, their, not gender, their sexuality, and by all accounts, it was a very sweet love story that does go quite in depth later on in the series and that is a graphic novel so it probably, should be, probably wouldn't take me too long to read so i think that will be the next read um so i'll probably come back to you in about 10 minutes because it is it used to be a webcomic and it was printed in hardback and from what i understand it the panels are quite large and quite simple in their artwork it's still very expressionist as well as the text um, so I will read that and come back to you. I told you it wouldn't take long, but I finished A Heartstopper by Alice Osman. I thought that was really cute. Um, there were some dark moments in there, so trigger warning for uh, sexual, not sexual abuse, but unwanted, unwanted physical, utter, um, physical touch, I would say. Maybe a bit of just normal assaults. Not that assault is ever normal or um, okay, but pretty much just the story of Nick and Charlie meeting each other and meeting each other, meeting each other, becoming friends, and then that friendship developing into something more. Uh, Charlie is out. He's about fourteen at the start of the novel. He's in. Uh, English year 9. He is out, he is gay, he's, um, he's probably the only gay in the boys school. And then we meet Charlie. Now Charlie grapples with his own sexuality. He doesn't realise that he might be gay or even like boys until he meets, Ch um, until he meets Charlie. And that's just a really cute friendship that goes into something more so I gave it four stars and I will be continuing on with the series as and when I find them. Not that they're hard to find but you know. At next I'm going to be reading Holly Bourne's um, Are We All Lemons and Snowflakes. Everyone wants to be special. Post out. No. Uh, welcome to Camp Reset. Summer Camp with a difference. A place I'm reading summer. I look about summer camp in the middle of winter. Clever Hannah. Uh, but a place often was shot at normality. Uh, for Olive, a girl on the edge and for her new friends who are all dealing with their own battles. But, Olive, but as Olive sets it, settles in, she starts to wonder. Maybe it's this messed up world that needs fixing and not them. And so she comes up with a plan. Because together, snowflakes can, call, can form avalanches. Uh, it does have a tiny little 
not at the back so it contains materials uh, it contains materials that some of you guys may find distressing Ooh. ah here we go uh, all we all there is a f um, of a content warning note here uh, it's a work of fiction that deals with many real issues including suicidal behaviour, mental health conditions including depression and mania and discussion of sexual assault to just be wary of that if any of you are wanting to and take this book. I think it is a fourth one. It was first published in 2018. And I just thought, I think I picked this up on a bit of a win because I just thought the title was fun. Oh, we host snuff, lemon and snowflakes. I, I think everybody now knows that a snowflake is a derogatory term used for people who people who are very aware of what's going on and the older generation don't like it uh, but it is still fairly early so I think I'm going to read this and pop a Christmas film on I'm going to finally watch Love actually I started with a couple of days ago got a little bit of and something else caught my attention probably that might be for Christmas <laughs> Yeah, that's it for this update. I'll probably not update you again until tomorrow, even if I do finish the book. Because it's been getting on a bit. So it's up for now. So it's up now. Wednesday. I lost. Nails. That one was as long as that. This one. Was as long as. Was as long as that one. But that nail was really soft and it snapped. So, we just have to wait and see what happens if the rest of them stay on. I am, um, like I said, I'm currently reading um, Are We All Lemons and Snowflakes by Holly Bourne. I'm on page 127, about to start chapter 16. This is a really quick read. It's about... Three hundred and ninety seven hundred and ninety seven pages long. That much into it. And it does move really quick. Pretty much everything that's happened in the synopsis has already happened in the book. And there are some I will say trigger warning for to tell me in the Ah, here we go. Um, it does mention suicide and suicidal behaviour quite a lot in the context of um, Olivia has been on suicide watch before and the camp, and the camp, although none of these kids have been classified as a danger to themselves or others, they are still um, mental health counsellors, they are still on the lookout for that so suicide and suicidal behaviour, suicidal um, ideation does come up in the um, therapy sessions. Not in a way that anybody's um, committing it or, Id or idolising it or anything like that. It is just mentioned almost as a fact of life. Um, it is a it is something that, that they have to look out for in teenagers, uh, in anybody suffering with mental health conditions, but teenagers are probably more susceptible to it. At least that's the impression that I'm getting from the conversations that have been had. Uh, we have a couple of OCD girls who own their label and they use it almost as a shield. Then we have Olive who doesn't know her diagnosis and doesn't want to know and she doesn't want to use it as a shield she doesn't want people to sort of think oh well she's got this we'll give her a free pass we also have I've forgotten his name already uh, but we have a couple of lads who kind of feel the same way as Olive but they know the diagnosis 
so it is quite an interesting one. Um, there is a message in this at the moment that's there and it's quite clear but it's not preachy and that message is to be kind to yourself but yeah olive is snarky and i like it uh, but that's it for this update not much to tell you other than i am enjoying this oh and i did watch love actually and i don't get it <laughs> hi guys it's thursday i told you i lost the nails didn't it yet but I have just finished All the Old Lemmings and Snowflakes by Holly Bourne. I think I told you about this. But I gave this, this came up with a 5 star on Copile. Technically, I didn't love it. But they were, and that's for personal reasons because Olive suffers a depressive episode and I did struggle with depression and anxiety last year during lockdown so that was a bit close to the bone so I didn't love it but I did but I did enjoy the representation Olive isn't Olive doesn't want to know her diagnosis but the stupid doctor tells her it anyway um, and they think it's bipolar, so I can't talk for that. I don't have bipolar, I just have depressive. I think it's seasonal affective disorder, but um, I did have a depressive episode. Um, touch wood, I'm okay now. Um, I have my coping mechanisms and whatnot. Uh, but, so I can understand that, I can relate to that part of it. Uh, she also has mania and hyperactive episodes, which I don't relate to as much, but the way it is written makes you understand what is happening. And there is an inevitability about this that Olive knows and acknowledges, but you can't help but just be on waiting for that shoe to drop, for, for the mania to end, because Olive just goes from one extreme to another but it is the <coughs> excuse me the back little line sums this up perfectly i think i read it before i started this book but i can't think of any other way to describe it a trailblazing and painfully honest novel about mental health friendship and making this crazy world a kind of place i completely agree um, just be wary that if you are in a bit of a bad place mentally, it may not be the best book to read while you are dealing with mental health issues. Maybe read it, definitely read it, because there are a there is a beautiful message in here about how kindness can change the world, can um, can save a lot of people. But where, but however, the message is that to be kind to other people you have to stop being kind to yourself so read it so if you are suffering with any kind of mental health issue you know i want this to be a safe space for you to talk and um, can't promise i'll understand but i can promise i won't judge oh excuse me uh, what was i saying oh yeah so read this i do think everybody should read this whether you are a Lemming, which they describe as being a new typical person, um, mentally health, mentally healthy, no mental health conditions. You follow the crowd. You are normal, a quote, or a snowflake, where you stand out from the crowd because you have a a label against your mental health. It does explain it. Pro it probably explains it better in the book than I'm trying to hear but it's got five stars and I just love Olive. I love her when she's manic because it's done in a way that you from the outside looking in you know something's not right uh, but because you read it from Olive's perspective it isn't until she crashes 
that you realise that something was wrong and then obviously she crashes and then that's the part that I related to and I feel so bad for her knowing what I went through I suppose is what she was going through so that was nicely done it was sympathetically done I think uh, but yeah I gave this four stars I think I will probably keep uh, five stars I should say I think I'll probably keep this one and look to see if Hollyborn has any other um, any other books out. I think she does, but I don't know if they all deal with similar topics. But yeah, I recommend this one. Right, so that takes us to book 13 of the month. I have a runny nose. And I don't know what to read next. I want something a little bit more lighthearted. But I don't think I own anything like that. That's a bigger fantasy reader. Yay! Um, I'm just having a think. I think I'm actually going to read A Lazo by Darcy Little Badger. And um, I'm not sure if it's middle grade or adult or children's, but it basically follows a young girl in a very similar world to what we have now but in this world in a in this world the indigenous myths are real and um, I do think it is I think it's own voices because I think Darcy Little Badger is an indigenous person to um, America so Alatsui is her take on those indigenous myths and in that world those myths are true and I think I don't know if the Latsui is the name of the girl or if it's something else but I believe the girl can see these monsters and she just gets on with things but I'll tell you more when I know more probably tomorrow so it's Friday I did start a Latsui last night and I gave you a brief but we've got the dust cover here which will do a better job. Imagine an America very similar to our own. It's got homework, best friends and pistachio ice cream. There are some differences. This America has been shaped dramatically by the magic, monsters, knowledge and legends of its peoples. Those indigenous and those not. Some of these forces are charmingly everyday like the ability to make an orb of light appear or travel across the world through rings of fungi. That would be fun. But other forces are less charming and should never see the light of day. Elatsui lives in this slightly stranger America. She can raise the ghosts of dead animals. A skill passed down through generations of her Lipan Apache family. Her beloved cousin has just been murdered in a town that wants no prying eyes. But she is going to do more than pry. The picture perfect facade of Willoughby. Willoughby um, asks gruesome secrets and she will rely on her wits, skills, and friends to tear off the mask and protect her family. Darcy Little Badger is an extraordinary debut talent in a world in the world of speculative fiction. And this cover is pretty. So I have two unboxings as well. I pay for these myself, not affiliated, not or anything like that and I have already seen what's in them because I have no chill. <laughs> so we have a Luma crate. The theme for this month was first. We pop that there. We have a pin banner and the pin banner is inspired by Girl Serpent Thorn and it is the Firebird, designed by Abigail Spence at Aspen, Aspen Sea Art. And then we have a Rosie Thorn's 88 mug. This one is The Road Through Midnight and is inspired by the Winter Night Trilogy. And I think Catherine Arden, but I don't think that's right. <laughs> oh. uh, 
then stickers inspired by Nevermore by Jasper Townsend, designed by Nevermore Kunst. Here we have Ben. Pencil tin inspired by Ninth House. I don't know if you can see it, but it says, I want to survive this world that keeps trying to destroy me. Um, designed by Chatney Nora. We have a calendar. And artwork by Saltings and Frostbite Studios. Designed by Chatty Nora, and this is um, different Starfrost lovers. The next item is the book and the pin. So, this is the pin, and this book is gorgeous. We have black sprayed edges, and then we have some printing on that side which matches that. <laughs> this is an exclusive um, transparent overlay and is signed by the author as well. So this is a marvellous light by Freya Mask. A hidden world of magical a conspiracy a thrilling romance. Young Baronet Robin Blythe was already in the spot of bother. He's struggling to be a decent older brother and a responsible employer, and to the res and to rescue the estate ravaged by his late parents' excesses. When an administrative mistake upon some parliamentary liaison to a secret society, and he discovers magic lies beneath the reality he's always known. Soon Robin must contend with magic's dangers as well as its beauty, for as he tries to find his missing predecessor, he attracts a deadly curse. To navigate these hazards, he will need help. Need the help of Edwin Corsi, his prickly magical counterpart, society counterpart. But his aloof associate clearly wishes Robin were anyone and anywhere else. Drawn together by an unexpected by unexpected perils, Robin and Edwin will discover a mystery as old as the power that binds the land, a plot that threatens every magician in the British Isles, and a secret that some have already died to keep. Yes, so that's so pretty. Um, next month's theme is Royal Secrets. Our hardback book for January is This Woven Kingdom by Tara Murphy. We were swept away by Tara's gorgeous prose, utterly obsessed with the relationship between Aliza and Cameron, and captivated by this Persian inspired world. The Illumicrate edition features an entirely redesigned naked hardback cover with gorgeous filing details, digitally printed edges, and is signed by the author. Paperback book this month is the first in an Indian inspired trilogy from a debut author. In a world where magic is a scarce resource, one country's new queen is desperate to find a magical relic long rumoured to unlock a new source of magic. To do so, she must reunite with her siblings, but with all of them harbouring secrets, will her plan succeed? A Lumicrate edition features a digital signature, exclusive cover, and exclusive sprayed edges. Featured fandoms of this month are We Hunt the Flame, Prison Healer, Priory of the Orange Tree, and The Never Tilting World. I like it when there's useful things in the boxes. I think we've got too many cups now. Uh, next one is Book Book Club. The theme for this one. Whoa! Ah, spellbound. We have a pencil. I have to put it in here to see. A pencil that says, "There is no enjoyment like reading." This was. Inspired by Pride and Prejudice. And um, this little fabric item is a book roll, a pencil graph, even. Good job. Pens and pencils in there, and 
wrap it up and tie it nicely. And that is inspired by six the Crimson Queens by Flux Crafts. We have a little door plaque that says this is where the magic happens. Uh, with artwork by Forensics and Flowers. More stickers for reading journal by Pin and Ink. We have a reading journal, now this is inspired by Belle uh, from Beauty and the Beast. Belle's Library inspired reading journal by Pin and Ink as well. So it's just a little book that you can pop reviews in. Oh, that's cool. And then the book for this one is Brush of Wings by Laura E. Weymouth. Not what I know about this one is it's set in Scotland. <laughs> Rowena Winthrop has always known as magic within her, but though she hears voices on the wind and possesses unusual talent, her mother, Mayweb, believes that Rowena lacks discipline and refuses to teach her the craft that keeps the Scottish village safe. When Mayweb dies a sinister death, it seems Rowena's one chance to go into her power has passed. Then on a fateful storm tossed night, Rowena rescues a handsome stranger named Gawain from shipwreck, and her mother miraculously, miraculously returns from the dead, also with the peers. This re resurrected myriad is nothing like the old one. To hide her new and monstrous nature, she turns Rowena's brothers and Gawain into swans, and robs Rowena of her voice. Forced to flee, Rowena travels to the city of Inverness to find a, break, find a way to break the curse. But monsters take many forms, and in Inverness, Rowena is soon caught in a world of strangers who want to use her raw magic for their own gain. If she wishes to save herself and the people she loves most, Rowena will have to take her fate into her, own, into her own hands and unlock the power that has evaded her for so long. And this cover is pretty, and you've got. I'm assuming that, I'm assuming that this is Rowena, and she has her eyes shut. A mean naked cover. has her eyes open. I think that's quite cool. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this update I think. I'll come back to you probably on something. That I bought myself a little loosey from the York Meat Post Merchants. And it came in this cute little box. Okay. Right, and another one. Isn't it just so cute? Looks like a little Santa. And we have the little emblem in the back. I need to find somewhere to put my little ghosty Santa. Mm, where he's not going to fall. I think I might put him on my bookshelf. But, so, in terms of reading, I didn't read anything. I did read a little bit more on Friday night slash afternoon when I was waiting for Sean to pick me up. Uh, but then I did buy, then I did get two new books today. And a pair of gloves, but we're not really bothered about gloves, are we? Ah, uh, this is just a voucher from Disney Sheet Lace that I go to. A nice cute little card. Yeah. Let's just we'll put that there. Uh, so I've got uh, Scarlet Sinclair's King of Battle and Blood. And this is an Adrian and Isolde book. 
is all the Dilara considers her wedding day to be her death day. To end a years long war and protect the people of her kingdom, she is to marry the vampire king Adrian Alexander Vasilev and kill him. But her assassination attempt is thwarted and Adrian mourns that if his Isolde tries to kill him again, he will raise her as the undead. Faced with the possibility of becoming the thing she hates most, Isolde seeks other ways to defy him and survive the violence and political machinations of Adrian's brutal vampire court. Except it isn't the court she ends up hearing most, it's Adrian and her intense attraction to him. Wrapped in a mystery and a past he, re he refuses to discuss, Adrian nevertheless starts to become less of a monster to Isolde. Uh, despite their undeniable chemistry, Isolde can't run, help but wonder why the king, fierce, complicated, ambitious and at times inexplicably tender, chose her as consort. The answer will shatter her world. It's the floppy. Yeah, it's floppy. It's forbidden planet. They're going to be floppy. Uh, then we have The Descendant of the Crane by June He. The Princess Hesina of Yan has always been eager to shirk the responsibilities of the crime. But when her beloved father is murdered, she's pushed into power, suddenly the queen of an unstable kingdom. Determined to find her father's killer, Hesina does, the, does something desperate. She enlists the aid of a soothsayer. In Yan, magic was outlawed centuries ago. This is a treasonous act, punishable by death. Using the information illicitly provided by the Sooth and uncertain if she can even trust her family, Hasina turns to Akira, a brilliant investigator who's also a convicted criminal with secrets of his own. With the future of her kingdom at stake, can Hasina find justice for her father, or will the cost be too high? I heard good things about both of those for different reasons. Uh, but that's, I think that's it for this vlog. I'm not going to be doing anything exciting. For the rest of the afternoon, I want to finish that uni essay script, would you flippy thing? And I'll probably just read some more of uh, Alatsui. I am enjoying it. The first chapter was a little bit slow, a little bit long, and a little bit weird to get into, but I'm actually quite enjoying it now. And I think that's it for this vlog. So if you liked it, give it a like and hit that subscribe button if you want to see this. Talk about these. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.